Hey guys, Blazin here. Better grab some popcorn and soda because there's a lot of things to talk about this gun. Welcome to my analysis on the T-33 GML. Now before we talk about the needler we know in Halo Reach, let's talk about its development history. Prior to the Covenant's formation, the elites mined Subanese pink crystals from one of St. Helios' moons, Suban, and grew to believe that even rudimentary scientific investigation into the crystals was tantamount to heresy. When they first began to incorporate the crystals into weaponry, the elites knew how to manipulate and weaponize the crystals, but they lacked a deeper understanding of its properties. The pre-Covenant weapons were unique, though their designs were demonstrated the elites poor understanding of the crystals, and further study on these designs were mostly abandoned until the dissolution of the Covenant. So basically, space dinosaurs find cool pink crystal thing, and they try to weaponize it, and they're too dumb to get it working until the Covenant, aka the Prophets, come in, and they were just like, hey yo, space dinosaurs, let's make this weapon for you, and uh, yeah. Moving a bit forward, but still prior to 2552, the T-33 GML along with another needle-based weapon, was manufactured by Sacred Promissory. Now fast forward to Halo Reach, the T-33 GML is a Covenant infantry weapon used during the Human Covenant War, and is a single-handed, fully automatic infantry specialized weapon. Fun fact, did you know that the Needler has nicknames? Yeah, nicknames which include the Pinky and the Shrimp Shooter. <laughs> I didn't know they had nicknames till now. Moving on. The T-33 GML was employed by the Covenant and observed by the United Nations Space Command as early as 2533, as indicated by its UNSC designation, Type 33 Guided Munitions Launcher. This model of the T-33 GML was notably employed during the fall of Reach by fleet of Valiant Prudence forces deployed in a pause. The T-33 GML fires shards of pink Subanese crystals, which are now mostly known as Blamite. Upon impaling a target, the blamite shards become chemically reactive and detonate after a few seconds. Injuries inflicted from the exploding shards are gruesome, as microscopic pieces of crystals can become embedded in tissue. If multiple shards make contact with a living target in quick succession, if previous shards have yet to detonate, then a chain reaction occurs. Their chemical properties and the shards detonate simultaneously through a process known as proximal resonance instability or, as we know it as, super combined, causing an immediate and violent explosion that is almost always lethal. As for the T-33 GML's inner mechanism, when the trigger is pulled, the needles are fed from the top and broken into smaller pieces, which are then launched into enemies. The T-33 GML notably features an additional magnetic auger within the weapon that catalyzes the shards by charging their chemical mixture. The shards then become capable of tracking specific heat signatures of sighted targets. The shards are propelled through the barrel, out of the muzzle between the channel braces, and towards enemies. The user reloads by shaking the weapon once, prompting a new magazine of crystals that protrude from the chassis again. The T-33 GML is considered unique among Covenant weapons in that it does not require full runner technology to function. The T-33 GML was one of the most unusual weapons in the Covenant arsenal, and the least understood. By 2552, how the weapon functions still remain a mystery to human military experts and scientists, despite the weapon being encountered early on during the war. According to Dr. Catherine Halsey, the T-33 GML lacks any kind of electronic, physical, or radiative connections between the trigger and firing mechanism. Moving on to trademarks, there are two white arrows at the lower front, a Covenant symbol located on the grip, and on the sides of the chassis are a few white Covenant markings. This T-33 GML has a long handguard extending from the lower cowling that curves upwards and a thumb hole in the grip. The bottom cowling also contains the gun's power supply. The chassis is pretty long too and has small blue lights on both sides. The top of the weapon contains the T-33 GML's distinctive ammo, Blamite with the exposed needles protruding from the holes in the weapon's chassis. The exposed needles are held within the chassis of the weapon 
allowing the user to use the sharpened ends of the exposed shards as an improvised melee weapon. The two main components converge at the muzzle in front of the grip. The muzzle is situated between an upper and a lower channel brace. The channel braces extend outwards around the muzzle, presumably to prevent the muzzle from being blocked. As far as sights go for this weapon, well, there isn't anything to look through at the top. But that's okay, because this kind of gun doesn't really need any traditional sights since the needles track targets anyways. The T33 GML holds 24 needles in the chassis, plus 96 extra spare needles. The fire rate I got was around 670 rounds per minute. Reload speed was about 1.03 seconds. The max effective range was about 39.74 meters. Now, an accuracy test is not necessary because, well, look at this shit. It's a goddamn smart gun. The T33 GML takes 6 shots to break shields and 6 shots to health, totaling 12 shots to super combine. First strike. And finally, the TTK I got was around 1.09 seconds. Oh wait, hold up, one more thing. Almost forgot to include that the super combined blast radius is around 4.78 meters. And that's the Needler. Next I'll show off a few shots of me shooting the gun, and then after that I'll give my final conclusions. Overall, my thoughts on Halo Reach's Needler is that it's fine. In the past, I'd normally give some sort of suggestions or changes that I think a weapon could benefit from. But the Needler is fine in Halo Reach. I really don't have any complaints about it. So that's gonna really be it for this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you want to stick around. Links to my shit are down in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time, peace.